Hello and welcome to the episode 162 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. On our menu today, among other things, some problems in the drum department, a prestigious honor, and more work on the White Album. On the 11th of June 1960, the Silver Beatles were engaged to play at the Grosvenor Ballroom in Wallasey, England, for the third time in a week. However, when the band regrouped at the Jacaranda Coffee Bar before the gig, drummer Tommy Moore didn't show up. Moore had decided that he had enough of the meager pay, and in particular of John Lennon's acidic remarks towards him. He then decided to leave without even bothering communicating the news to the others. The rest of the group discovered all this from Moore's girlfriend when they drove to his house with their manager Alan Williams. The woman shouted from an upstairs window to get lost and that her boyfriend had a real job now. He was completing the night shift at the Garston Bottle Factory. The band went to the factory and tried to persuade Moore to honor the engagement unsuccessfully. The Silver Beatles then arrived at the Grosvenor Ballroom with a drum kit, but without a drummer. To avoid any problem with the rowdy audience, John Lennon decided to explain the situation from the stage, asking jokingly if someone from the audience could give a hand. Unfortunately for him, his plea for help was received by Ronnie, a huge teddy boy, leader of a local gang, who had never even tried to play drums before. This put the band in an extremely tight spot. During the first half of the show, Ronnie had taken a liking to his role as a musician and kindly offered them to join the band permanently. It was an offer they obviously couldn't refuse without risking their health and that of their equipment. And the drums were still being paid! During the interval, Lennon placed a call to Williams, alerting him of the situation. The manager ran back to the Grosvenor to the aid of the band, and somehow the lads and their equipment managed to escape without damages. The Silver Beatles were George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice, and Stu Sutcliffe on bass. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles, now with Pete Best on drums, performed at a top 10 club for their ongoing second residency in Hamburg, West Germany. 1962. The Beatles, still with Pete Best in the lineup, traveled to the Playhouse Theatre in Manchester on a bus, loaded with members of their fun club, to record their second BBC radio appearance. This time the show was Teenager's Turn, Here We Go. The band rehearsed their material at 4 pm and then took part to the recording process from 8.45 to 9.30 pm performing the Lennon-McCartney song Ask Me Why, plus two covers, Besame Mucho and A Picture of You. The broadcast of the show between 5 and 5.29 pm of the 15th of June marked then the first time an original Beatles song was aired. And while it's not the first time I tell you, let me repeat once again my plea to you. Please support this podcast and my other music-related projects. How? Well, even just a simple like or a comment to this episode would do, but you can do much more. Visit www.simonmas.com support to find out the many ways in which you can help me out to keep going. The link, as they say, is in the description. Thank you for being fab! On the 11th of June 1964, Ringo Starr was finally discharged from the University College Hospital in London, England, temporarily cured of his tonsillitis. He set off to reach the rest of the Beatles in Australia, via San Francisco, Honolulu, Fiji and Sydney. Meanwhile, the other three fabs, with Jimmy Nichols still subbing on drums, reached Australia, flying from Hong Kong with their refueling stop in Darwin, in the Northern Territories. The initial planned stop, in Manila, was ruled out by Philippine airport authorities due to extreme heat. Despite the fact that stopping in Darwin was a last-minute decision and that the plane landed there at 2.30 am, the Beatles still found about 400 fans to hail their arrival down under. From Darwin, the band flew to Sydney, 
where they found a tropical rainstorm. They were not too impressed having to be driven by in an open truck the parade in front of the fans standing on the airport terraces. John, George, Paul and Jimmy had to stay at the Sheraton after the Hilton, just across the street, refused to have them to avoid any problem with their fans. Funnily enough, the fans were waiting for the Beatles at the Hilton, so the band could get into the Sheraton premises without the usual fuss. Unable to leave their hotel, they spent the best part of the day waiting for their late luggage and giving a host of interviews to the local press. One year later, in 1965, news broke that the Beatles were to be awarded with an MBE membership of the British Empire. They had been nominated for the honour by the then British Prime Minister, Harun Wilson. Beatles manager Brian Epstein was interviewed on the phone by journalist Peter Hyde in the late afternoon about the event. Similarly, Paul McCartney was called by BBC staff interviewer Ronald Burns. Both interviews were aired during BBC Radio's Late Night Extra, between 10.35 and 11.30 pm today. Let's close the episode with two 1968 entries. For a start, both John Lennon and Paul McCartney were busy at the EMI studios on this date. Paul started working on Blackbird. He was also filmed with Mary Hopkins, one of the first acts to be signed by Apple. The footage, shot by Tony Bramwell, ended up with other bits in a film meant to publicize Apple Records. The other bits included the Beatles having a business meeting with publisher Dick James, head of Apple Electronics Alexis Mardas busying himself in his lab, McCartney playing Blackbird and the Beatles recording Helter Skelter. The film, untitled, was shown on three occasions. On the 21st of June 1968, in a private screening for Capitol Records executives and then, later on the same day, at the Capitol sales convention attended by Paul McCartney and Tony Bramwell at the Century Plaza Hotel in Los Angeles, California. And, finally, on the 26th of August 1968, when press officer Derek Taylor showed it at an EMI sales conference. Apart from the brief performance of Blackbird included in the film, the filming was useful for outlining the shaping of the song as McCartney played it to producer George Martin and sorted out what was missing from it. As it happened, Tony Bramwell's sound recordist put down the whole 41-minute rehearsal of the piece. Having shaped up the song, Paul taped a run-through of its performance, with John Lennon and Martin in the control room. Martin suggested to keep the track as a rough demo to work out an arrangement, but John replied that the vocals and guitar version sounded excellent already. John and Martin then discussed Revolution 1 and its ending, plus the various recordings made for the stage production of In His Own Right. After that, there were more rehearsals for Blackbird, some featuring Lennon on a second acoustic guitar, and more recordings of the song. In the end, Blackbird was recorded in 32 takes, only 11 of which were complete. Six mono mixes were also created before the end of the session, wrapped up at 12.15 am. In the meantime, between 7 and 10.15 pm, John kept working on more sound effects for Revolution 9. Also today, in California, George Harrison filmed a second scene for Ravi Shankar's Raga. Like the scene shot on the previous day, George and Shankar were filmed on a cliff in Big Sur, with Shankar giving a second sitar lesson to the Beatle. Well, this concludes today's episode of What A Fab Day. Tune in tomorrow for more stories from the life of the Beatles. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.